BK5YYY here, Roger, in the workshop. Well, tonight we're going to talk about Comtech filters. Now, Comtech's a little Italian company from the north of Italy, and uh, BK5, uh, sorry, BK3 BFG first brought these filters to my attention, and they're used for 7 megahertz or 6 megahertz or even 8 megahertz bandwidth. DDBT and they're very clever little devices so let's have a bit of a look at them right so uh, you can see from the band pass on the screen that uh, they're very flat at the top and then they've got sharp notches at the edge and that's a very clever thing and a very hard thing to achieve context filters are primarily aimed at the television market from 470 megs to uh, about 850 megs. And uh, us being 445.5 megahertz in uh, amateur television, these, amp, uh, these filters had uh, possibilities for us. And uh, Comtech went about uh, tuning a filter for Peter and he bought it and it seems to have performed well. Consequently, I bought one and uh, I was quite impressed with it. Now, uh, there are six and seven pole filters. Peter and I both have a seven pole, which is uh, for more exacting uh, filtering at the edges. And you can see those two little whoopties on each edge of the uh, black band pass. They're notches. And they're very cleverly positioned just to uh, add a sharp skirt at the critical point where we might uh, interfere with our neighbours in. Uh, 450 PMR or our other amateur friends below uh, our 7 meg bandwidth. Right, so as you can see, the, uh, the filter has a target. And if you were to be brutal about it, this is the response of what the target filtering should be. Now, obviously, if we uh, amplify and deliver a distortion free uh, spectrum to our antenna, you'll find that uh, we wouldn't even need a filter. But because we amplify, we introduce skirts. So we want to suppress the edges of the uh, our carriers, like I said, to protect our neighbors next door. Now we're those uh, seven meg bandwidth people, as you can see in the second column there. And in actual fact, it's not 3.5 megahertz, the bandwidth of the signal. It's a little bit less. Right, so here's the uh, layout and the look of the uh, X-line extracted pole filter. And this is a seven pole unit that uh, is used at VK3RTV. And uh, you can see they've got some very powerful uh, advantages over some filters, particularly uh, that it's got a very tight response at the skirts and uh, it can be tuned a very, very wide bandwidth and uh, it was only designed for 470, but we're using it down lower again. So it's very clever the way it uh, delivers that very full uh, UHF TV band response and some. and. Uh, We'll see a bit about that later. It also provides a DC short, which is handy if there's a lightning strike or static buildup on your antenna. You've got a little monitor probe on there. There's a little SMA you can only just see on the uh, left-hand connector there. And uh, some of the filters are with N connectors. Some of them are with the uh, 716 DIN connectors, which is a big connector. Right, so you can see more of the layout of the filter there. And uh, you can see that there's some little pill boxes on the bottom and some little shafts that go in and out at the side there. Um, the uh, type that we've got is a 50 mil filter, which is good for 250 watts, I think, is the rating of them. And you can see there's quite a lot of uh, scope there on the temperature that the filter can operate under because filters expand and contract like all things and that 
changes the response of your uh, um, bandwidth. So they've been very clever to uh, minimize the temperature drift on the filtering. Right, so you can see the insertion loss is very low and uh, they achieve that just by juggling all the positions of the filter quite cleverly. Uh, the poles are very exacting and the uh, method of their tuning is very clever the way they've organised things. And I think uh, Comtech pioneered that this technique for TV filtering. So here's a couple of stills from the, uh, from the pictures I've taken of the uh, filter and uh, that's in its... Uh, um pretty much tuned state and uh very silver finish there it's very impressive to look at the uh little red covers go over the collet so we don't bump them and change them accidentally and uh yeah it's quite impressive to look at now just a couple of features there you can see the egg beater there and uh that slid pretty much all the way down, whereas when I received it and uh, it was tuned to, I think, about channel 40 or 41, it was pushed much further up. So uh, that's uh, probably uh, something to do with the, uh, the uh, matching between that loop and the first probe there. Now, at the end of each probe, something I didn't cover is uh, there's a little slot and uh, each head of each probe is slit through the middle twice one from each direction so i'm yet to establish what that achieves but uh, i might do some experimentation on that now where uh, the egg beater i think is about to uh, I've got some measurements here somewhere. Here we go. The egg beat is uh, about to 40 by 70, I think, from memory. And uh, yeah, it's quite clever what it does, the spacing. And uh, getting the uh, coupling to that first pole just right. So after the tuning, this is what uh, we're aiming for as per their uh, original spec. Right, so here's the uh, finished product after the filter was retuned. So you can see the filter specs are pretty much what Comtech Com uh, predicted and uh, the uh, notches are where they suggested them to be. And uh, you can sort of see that roll off is mainly the, the guard band. So uh, pretty impressive how all that works. And uh, it's a lovely job. Thank you to VK5BD for producing that trace. And uh, yeah, it's been quite a uh, interesting little project and uh, very happy to uh, have had success with that. So since then, I couldn't help myself. I thought I have to build one of these. Now I got an old filter from the workshop and I've slowly been manicuring it and changing it. And uh, I built, turned upside down maybe, I built this little structure here at the top to mimic what uh, Comtech did. And my probes are a bit uh, thinner I may have to increase their size. But uh, the initial tests I've done are not bad. I've made some of these little uh, slots in between the uh, cavities. And probably the main difference with this little fella is, is that the spacing of these first two probes is a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna try and make my egg beater a little bit thinner. And uh, I've... Uh, hacked and 
ground and drilled and made a bit of an impact on that bit of uh, material there and it's slowly coming together so i'm pretty happy about that and uh i'll be reporting back on that later i guess i don't have high hopes as it's going to be as good as a comtech filter but who knows i mean the comtech people obviously have a lot more test equipment and a lot more r d available to them than me but uh yeah, that's uh, the story, and I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Well, we'll catch you uh, in the next video. And uh, thanks for VK3QL for uh, putting this little piece together. Cheers, and uh, see you in the next one.